everyone, good morning. Um, I want to start by making a small announcement. I know this channel's been dead lately, uh, and people have been asking me when am I going to put in some more content. Um, so I'm going to try. Uh, life takes you into different directions. Sometimes I just don't have the time, but uh, I figured out a way, and I'm going to try and put in new content uh, once in a while. So the first thing I want to talk about this morning is why is Harley producing a $30,000 um, electric bike? We already had Alta going out of business trying to do the same thing with a $10,000 bike. Uh, we have Zero trying for at least 10 years to to make money off of their electric bike uh, and it's much much cheaper so why is Harley doing that what's what's their what's their end game uh, so a little disclosure I'm not a Harley fan as you probably know if you looked at the other videos on my channel I see Harley as a more of a marketing company than a motorcycle company Everything they do is geared towards the Harley image. They're not uh, producing better motorcycles. They're producing better commercials. They're producing better slogans. Um, they're working hard in the marketing, but not, not really on the product. Uh, and, and I always saw that um, compared to companies like Aprilia or Ducati or, or even Suzuki and Japanese guys. Uh, they, they wake up in the morning thinking about how can I make my bikes quicker, faster, more reliable. Uh, Harley, <laughs> I imagine Harley and a Harley executive wakes up in the morning and, and asks himself, how can I make people love my uh, my merchandise more? I don't, I don't think they even think that they're selling motorcycles. It's just merchandise for them. Uh, how can I make people believe that if they like my merchandise, they like America better? Uh, they like the image better, they're part of the club, they're part of the tribe, uh, and they spend more money. So I think that's that's the mentality behind Harley, so that's why I'm not a big big fan of Harley. Um, so why, why are they doing that? First of all, I want to remind everyone that Harley had at least three failed attempts to um, do something unconventional in the past. Uh, three that I remember. One of them was in the early 2000s uh, and they were racing AMA, if you guys remember. Uh, didn't really make, make an impact, didn't make a dent. Unfortunately, um, miserable failure and, and had to cut their los losses, which is really strange because Harley's a large company. I mean, if, if they decide they want to put uh, the resources behind it and go racing they should be able to do that I mean small companies like I mean Pimora with 40 employees can can uh, achieve good results in World Superbike but, but yet Harley with, with everything they sell um, they just can't seem to do that uh, it didn't work out for them and that's unfortunate and and that was the end of that uh, I think the next attempt was with the V-Rod uh, and the V-Rod line lasted I think around 15 years um, due to lack of sales it was cancelled uh, and it was still a cruiser it was just a different different type of motorcycle for Harley and their their um, their target audience just, just didn't buy into it uh, and it went away and then the third attempt was in, in 2010, 2011, they were racing in the AMA, uh, this time not against other motorcycles, but they had their own, uh, their own class of their, their dirt flat track replica bike, I forget how it was called, but I'm probably going to put it on the screen. Uh, and they were racing for a few years, and if, if you looked at those races on TV, or you can, you can still find them on YouTube. It wasn't really, I mean, there was a lot of action there, but it wasn't really 
a motorcycle that was designed to do that and you can tell by um, how everyone that rides it needs to really um, really be careful not to not to uh, step out of the bikes bounds uh, because bad things happen and uh, there were lots of lots of crashes that ended up pretty badly uh, for the bike not for the riders thankfully uh, so why why are they doing this and, and who's going to buy that bike um, well I think that electric bikes uh, and it's a, this is an unfortunate uh, well I shouldn't say unfortunate but this is progress uh, electric bikes and electric vehicles are the future uh, and I think what Harley is doing there is they're testing power plants um, eventually I think they're going to transfer that power plant uh, into other motorcycles and 20 30 years from now everything's going to be electric uh, batteries are going to be different but I think the engine itself would, would still be uh, pretty much the same so I think that's that's why they're doing it why are they pricing it at thirty thousand dollars I'd, I'd hate to say that but Harley as Olbe has been and I think and you know you can hate me in the comments if you want but I think that Harley buyers were always being kind of suckers uh, they always put money on the image not not on the machine um, so they figured hey our customers are paying thirty thousand dollars for uh, motorcycles now our motorcycles uh, let's you know let's price it uh, comparable and see see what happens I don't think they are uh, planning to make any money off of it I think they know they're not gonna make a lot of money off of it I think personally the the Harley crowd is going to reject that bike just like they rejected everything uh, Harley did that didn't fall into uh, their category of, of cruiser slash chopper and I think they're gonna learn from that experiment like they always do so that's that's my take on why the live wire is there uh, let me switch lanes here it's always yeah, it's always a big deal to switch lanes to the 15. <laughs> uh, so it's a beautiful day in Las Vegas right now and just you're with me for the ride so let's just enjoy it. raining yesterday but it's all clear now so that's good so you're probably wondering why this is a motorcycle channel why am I driving in my truck instead of uh, motor vlogging on a bike so the answer is pretty clear I see motorcycles as I shouldn't say toys not toys but hobbies pretty expensive hobbies um, I don't like to commute on a motorcycle it's just too dangerous and it's either too cold or too hot uh, and you have to pack your dress suit um, and then dress up at work uh, so I prefer to be comfortable I prefer to uh, listen to podcasts or music uh, and and be be comfortable on my way to work and the way back uh, especially if I need to set of change clothes if I'm going to the gym or jiu-jitsu um, I prefer to simply take take my truck uh, now that's not to say I won't commute on a bike um, for you guys if the channel really takes off and you guys are going to demand it I'm probably going to get some sort of a commuter uh, obviously it's not going to be the Aprilia it's going to be maybe a BMW GS or something that I could be comfortable on and uh, I'll commute and motor, motor vlog on a bike but for now I prefer a car so if you look over there you can 
can see the new stadium being built that thing really took off overnight and it's gonna be ready for the Raiders so that's gonna be cool yeah things things change over here on the Las Vegas uh, skyline all the time so there's a new hotel being built on the north end of the strip uh, should be ready 2020 I think Now it also depends on the drive if if I was commuting between um, let's say Santa Monica and uh, and Encino, I take the canyons on the motorcycles, on the motorcycle every day. Um, but this is this is a pretty boring commute, <laughs> so it's just uh, just a straight line with a lot of traffic. So really, there's no benefit to to being on a motorcycle on this commute. And I know that some of you would love to have this commute because you go through the Vegas Strip every morning and every afternoon. And it never it never gets boring, uh, but I like looking at it uh, and being comfortable at the same time. <laughs> By the way, if any of you guys ride Harleys, just leave a comment below. <laughs> I apologize in advance. I didn't mean to uh, uh, shit on your motorcycle, but uh, that's that's how I feel. I'm not a Harley guy, um, um, I'm a sports bike guy, I think motorcycles should be good at what they do, which is uh, making you making you feel good. Um, motorcycles are not, they don't excel in uh, protecting you from the elements or even braking and accelerating their cars that are faster, faster than motorcycles, uh, same with driving on the way. The reason why we ride motorcycles is because of the way it makes us feel, right? Uh, it's it's a hobby, it's a sport, it's not, um, un unless you're a delivery guy, <laughs> it's not, it's not a, you don't do that for a living or a motorcycle racer. Um, so that's, that's why I enjoy motorcycles. This truck is uh, brand new. I bought it this year. I used to drive a 2006 F-150, and after 12 years, it died. 12 years and 150,000 miles, which was pretty strange because everybody said that. Uh, everybody told me F-150s pretty much live forever. So when the other truck died, uh, I really needed a truck. So I bought another F-150. Uh, we'll see how this uh, how long this one lasts uh, It's already showing signs of uh, I don't know after 5,000 miles. It's already showing signs of it's it's not riding Like it was when it was brand new uh, When it was brand new it took about 18 and a half 19 miles to the gallon and then if I would drive out of town, it would be 20.5 or 21 miles to the gallon. Uh, now it's down to 17 and a half. So it's, it's taking more gas as, as it's getting older. Also, it's not accelerating as, as hard as it used to be. Uh, I took the 3.5 EcoBoost, so it has almost 400 horsepower. Um, so it was is twice as fast as my old truck. My old truck was uh, 200 horsepower. Come on, buddy. Uh, this one obviously accelerates much quicker, but it does not uh, accelerate as quick as it used to be 5,000 miles ago, which uh, 
leads me to believe maybe the air filter needs changing, uh, but I just took it to uh, Ford for maintenance, so this is something they should have looked at. But maybe they didn't. And air filters really don't don't really get clogged after only 5,000 miles, so this is strange. It also has other flaws <laughs> um, that I'm probably going to cover in a different video. So this is the world's largest gift store, according to the owner. Uh, not sure if it is. Uh, because every everything over here is marketing. <laughs> so tell me what else you would like to see on the channel. What are the topics you think I should cover? Uh, and I'll try and, and do that for you. And, and if you're planning on buying a, a Harley Livewire, um, first of all, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, second of all, uh, write me and, and tell me how, how it is to, uh, to ride. Uh, and is it really worth the $30,000? Uh, and mind you, you can get a lot of good motorcycles for $30,000. I mean, almost all of the motorcycles on the market except maybe the Ducati Ducati V4R and some of the versions of the MV Augusta uh, but you can get a V4S no problem uh, you can get any of the Japanese bikes uh, so really and really any cruiser and this is the stratosphere <laughs> or as they call it now the strat uh, it's undergoing 180 million dollar renovation and I think that's not going to be enough because this place is really crappy uh, and also the audience that comes here is not very upscale but that's it the, the north end of the strip which is really the developing part of this trip. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for uh, watching my channel, thanks for watching the video, if you like it uh, hit subscribe and also click the notification. Uh, this is really my first attempt of a real serious video of talking about things so let me know how it went and uh, let me know what else you would like to see see you guys